Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, I'll talk about compatibility profiles, or a setting used in the frequency coordination tab to change the amount of spacing allocated for certain frequencies in Wireless Workbench 6. The frequency coordination tab is chock full of features to coordinate compatible frequencies for Sure and third party systems. One really handy tool in the Frequency Coordination tab is the, uh, is a, the Compatibility Profile, or basically a setting that changes the amount of personal space in the spectrum that different frequency types um, can be allocated. So you'll notice I've got a PSM-1000 in the G10 band, one frequency requested for the system. And if you've used Workbench before, you might notice that there's this little text here called Standard. Um, this standard is the compatibility profile that I'm currently using. Now let me explain compatibility profiles a little bit more. To do that, I'm gonna go into the Equipment Profiles dialog to show you where all these compatibility profiles are defined. So this Equipment Profiles dialog is the dialog that shows all of the systems Workbench contains in its database to coordinate frequencies for. So I'll select PSM1000 G10 just to show us. Now in this th uh, third tab here, it's in this tab where we show all of the spacing uh, parameters, or the filtering and intermod parameters, that are defining how the calculator will calculate frequencies for, in this case, P10 and the G10 band. Now you'll notice if you look at this table, uh, there are three columns of data down below. We've labeled robust, standard, and more frequencies. These are predefined compatibility profiles that Sure provides for all of the systems that we build into our database. And you can think of it like this. These numbers define how much space in the spectrum, in the frequency domain, that frequencies of PSM1000 G10 need to be considered compatible. Now, for Sure Systems and all the others we include in our database, we provide these for you. And these are um, uh, recommendations Sure makes that are fairly conservative, but we make them uh, these recommendations because we think that the frequencies from these coordinations are going to work. So why have three? Why have three different profiles? Um, the user, when they coordinate, only uses one of these profiles at a time for frequencies, but uh, there's a flexibility in being able to change this compatibility profile on the fly. Let's say this PSM1000 system is going to be used for my Money Talents IEM system, and I want the frequencies for that system to be super robust, meaning I want them to be as far away from any other RF noise, really well insulated. I would use this more robust compatibility profile, which if you can tell has the largest numerical values from all the different profiles. Um, that value being larger implies that more space is going to be taken up by frequencies with this compatibility profile as compared to those if it had standard or more frequencies uh, applied. Uh, so let's say instead of, uh, if I use this more robust profile, actually let's just uh, make, show an example. So if I take PSM1000 G10 and I select the header here, it, and I choose this compatibility tab on the side, you'll notice that I get shown a lot of different settings on this right-hand sidebar that allow me to adjust the compatibility for this type of frequency. So I'll change the compatibility profile to robust, and you'll notice robust is now listed here. And what this means is coordinating frequencies for this set of, uh, this set of channels is going to use those robust spacings. Now I've turned on the automatic, automatically calculate backup frequencies preference just to show you how many total possible frequencies I could find for a particular system. And what I'll do is I'll change this profile after I calculate each uh, set of frequencies and you'll see that number increase as I use more aggressive compatibility profiles. So with robust as my compatibility profile, um, you'll see I can basically fill the entire G10 band with frequencies. I found about 21 total frequencies for PSM1000. So uh, that's good, but let's say, you know, I really need more than 21 frequencies in this band. What I can do is adjust the compatibility profile to be something a little bit more aggressive or a little bit less robust. Now the frequencies are still going to be compatible, it's just that we're narrowing down the spacings that are going to be allocated for each one of those frequencies. So when I change this to standard, I'm going to be using a little bit narrower spacings and calculating frequencies instead of 21 total returns, oh, looks like 26 frequencies. And so maybe that's enough for me. Uh, but, you, you know, this, this notion of the number of total frequencies I can find and the robustness of them, they're sort of on opposite ends of the spectrum, if you will. Quantity versus quality is the direct trade-off that we make. If I really need more than 26, let's say I need 32 total frequencies for PSM1000, I can choose this more frequencies uh, compatibility profile. And calculating frequencies there up shows me I get more than enough, 38 total frequencies. 
So compatibility profiles is a really great tool to use when you need to trade off between the robustness of frequencies found and the total quantity of frequencies found. And these are properties that you can adjust for any type of system when coordinating them uh, in wireless workbench. I'll just add some QLXD systems to show you that uh, these systems too have the same set of spacings and I can change the compatibility profiles for those frequencies independently of those from any other type of system.